2 Timothy 3.16, and this is the New Living Translation. So if you're using your Bible and you want to find the scripture, you could read along with me, or I'm just going to read it because I have them written out. 2 Timothy 3.16 through 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God, or given by his inspiration, and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So God's word was written by inspiration by the Holy Spirit through holy men of God to equip us, to show us when we're going wrong. When we are, we are looking to make a decision in life, we can look at the Bible. We can ask God, God, is this right? And we could find the answer. Everything that you need to know to live a successful, blessed life on this earth, God has the answer in his word. He does. He has the answer in his word. The most important way you, have, you know that God is speaking to you, that God is sharing some insight or wisdom or truth to you, is it has to line up with his word. God will never lead you wrong. God's word is truth. So if someone, for instance, if someone were to come to you and say, you know, times are really hard, I lost my job, God told me to rob that bank to feed my family, pay my bills. Well, we know that can't be God. You know, the enemy is very deceptive. The Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. What does that mean? That means he disguises himself. He could make you think that God is trying to share something with you or tell you something. Meanwhile, it's the enemy. So we have to line up everything that we hear with the word of God. God speaks through his word. The second way God speaks is through Jesus in the Bible. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and I'm reading from the NIV. It says, In the past, God spoke to us through our ancestors, the prophets, at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. So this scripture is very clear that in the last days, we can go to the New Testament we can see what Jesus has written for our sake, for our benefit, so that we could be blessed on the earth. We hear God's heart heart through the words of his son Jesus. In John 3, 16, we're all familiar with that one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves everyone. He doesn't exclude anyone. People exclude themselves, but God doesn't exclude anyone. He loves everyone in the world so much that he sent his only son, he only had one son, and he sent his only son to die on that cross and pay the price for your sin and my sin so that one day heaven could not only be our home, but that we could have a blessed life on this earth. And that's the truth. God's word never lies. In John 14 and 9, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. See, Jesus is speaking on God's behalf. God speaks to us in these last days through his son, Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What does he mean here? What is he saying here? He's saying, if you want to know what God is like, look at my testimony. Look at my ministry. Look at my works. I'm just like my Father. I do everything just like my Father. As a matter of fact, Jesus shared in Scripture. He said, I only do what I hear the Father say. I only do what I hear the Father speak, and I only do what I see him do. Jesus didn't do anything of his own. He obeyed his Father in everything that he did. And then in John 10, 27, Jesus likens us to sheep. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. That's pretty clear, isn't it? My sheep hear my voice. Everyone who believes is a believer. Everyone who has accepted Jesus as their Savior and Lord, you're his sheep. In other words, he's your shepherd. He's the good shepherd. You follow him in this life. He said, my sheep hear my voice. 
That's not confusing in any way. Do you understand what that means? It's very clear. See, the Bible is very clear. God still speaks to us. Isn't that awesome? And God doesn't want you confused. He wants you to know when you have a question about anything in life. He doesn't want you to be confused. Well, is that God? Was that God? Was that me? Was that the enemy? No, he wants you to know. Jesus said, he said, my sheep hear my voice. And then it goes on to say, and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow because they don't know the voice of the stranger. So see, we have to be able to tune in to God, just like you tune into a radio station. Uh, my station is K-Love. I'm always telling my kids about K-Love radio. Well, you have to tune in 96.7. You have to fine tune your radio to that station if you want to listen to upliving, uplift, uplifting Christian music. If you want to tune in to what God is saying, you have to tune in to God. You have to spend time in the Word. You have to spend time with the Lord if you're going to know how to hear his voice because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Amen. Saints, you matter to God. You have to know how much you matter to God. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Each and every one of us have an awesome, exciting plan and purpose in this life, here and now. Amen. And you have to know how much you matter. You know, yesterday in the, in the uh, scripture seminar at the library, some of the ladies here were there, and I was sharing that with them. And I said, you know, that's not just a little cliche that Pastor Steve and I thought, yeah, let's tell the people they matter. Just a little cliche. No, it's not a cliche. It's not just something we came up with just to tell you. That's God's heart for you. You have to know how much you matter. Amen. You're made in his image, in his likeness. Yes. He loves you. When he created you, he had a plan and a purpose for your life. He mapped it out. And guess where you find out what the plan is? From his word. Another way God speaks to us is through his creation. And when I looked up these scriptures, I just thought, boy, the Lord really has a sense of humor. You know, Jesus has a sense of humor. You know how Pastor Steve, he loves to joke around when he's preaching and teaching? Because he has a lot of God's attributes in him. God is funny. Jesus is funny. They, they have a, he has a sense of humor. And if we have the Lord in us, we have a sense of humor also. And when I was reading these scriptures about his creation, in Proverbs 6 and 6, it says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Through God's creation, God created an ant, and he's telling us to learn wisdom from a bug. And in Proverbs 30 and 25, it says, The ant are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. What is God saying here? He's telling us, look at how the ant even knows to prepare for the winter. Even a bug knows. How many of you have seen, I mean, when we used to live out east, we had a lot of carpenter ants out east. I guess we had a lot of sand in the ground. And I used to watch. I, it, was, it was fun to watch sometimes if there were crumbs, after you had a barbecue or something. And you could watch, actually, an ant pick up a crumb that was so big. I mean, for that ant, it was heavy. And then you watch that ant take that crumb all the way to the ant hill and go right down the ant hill. It was just all sandy. It was like a little mountain they would make out of sand. And you saw the hole right on top. It was so funny. <laughs> and you watch that ant take that big crumb and go right down the hole with it. He was saving that that crumb for winter. God says, you even look at the ants. Look at how wise they are. Even the bugs know that they have to prepare to be successful in life, Amen. that they have to work hard. That was hard work for those ants. Amen. They had to work hard for that. And God is telling us we could even learn through creation. He speaks to us even through bugs. I thought that was funny. We have a lot of squirrels in our, in our area where we live. And in the summer, we see those squirrels, and they're so cute, right, Paulie? Sometimes they're so cute. You see the little squirrels with the little acorn, the way they eat it, and they're adorable. They're, they're really cute. But then we also see the squirrel take the acorn, dig a hole, and bury the acorn. And we have seen those same squirrels finding where that acorn is in the winter, digging it up, and eating it. God's creation. They know how to prepare. They know that they have to work to make, to make food, to put food on their table. <laughs> for their babies. So we even hear God speaking through creation. 
God also speaks through other believers. I was sharing with the girls yesterday also that the Lord spoke through one of my English teachers when I was in 11th grade in high school. She must have been a Christian. She was a very sweet lady. I still can see her face. I don't remember her name. Actually, I think it was Miss, Miss Halleck. And um, I was in regular English. My, my parents, well, when I was a little younger, my teachers told my parents, you know, she, you know when they had parent-teachers conferences, my parents went and they told my mother, oh, you know, she's just getting by. You know, she'll never really excel in too much. You know, she's just getting by. Speaking of me, words, right? Well, my English teacher said to me one year, that my 11th grade year in high school, why are you in regular English? You need to be in honors English, she told me. And I went, like perked up, honors English? So she helped me switch classes. I went into honors English, and that was the first year I was on the honor roll. She believed in me. My teacher spoke, I believe it was from the Lord. I never forgot that teacher. I never forgot those words. Of course, I matter. <laughs> my English teacher believed in me. The Lord had her tell me that. I know he did. It's important for us to fine-tune and only receive words of life. You know, she encouraged me that year, and I worked a little harder, and I did better in school because she encouraged me. Don't ever receive words from anyone that put you down. And I know there are times many of us have been through so much stuff in our childhood, and maybe our teachers or our parents or people in authority, maybe they spoke words to you that weren't encouraging and lifting you up. I want you to take those words and give them to Jesus. You know what? Let's do it right now. Right now. Because I know the enemy uses those words and he brings back evil words that put you down. And you could be depressed today from something that happened 30 years ago. So right now, I want you to just, even if you don't, can't remember the words, but I want you right now, in your heart, you don't have to say anything out loud, but just go like this and just lift them to the Lord and say, Jesus, I give you. I give you those words. I'm not going to allow those words to affect my life anymore. I cast my care upon you because you care for me. I am not receiving those evil words anymore. I allow your word to, to create in me and to help me to be all that you have done for me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God speaks to us through believers. He speaks to us through our friends. Many years ago, some of you know my testimony, I was very, very sick. This time I was so sick, I was like in and out of consciousness. I remember my mother being there, and, and I was like not awake fully, but not in, in a coma fully. I can't even explain what I was. And my mother was trying to feed me because I wasn't eating. And I remember I saying, come on, Roseanne, just eat a little bit. And that same day, a friend of mine that we used to pray together all the time, a wonderful girl, her name was Vanessa. Vanessa came to my house to see me, to see how I was doing. And she came right up to, real close to me because she wanted me to hear the word that the Lord gave her for me. And if you want to, it's in Acts 7. Because I found this scripture many, many years after this incident happened. And I said, wow, Lord, you are really awesome. How the Lord would show me where the scripture is. And it's in Acts 7 and 34, and I'm reading for the new, from the New King James. And part of that scripture, Acts 7, and the second part of that scripture, and this is what she said to me. She said, Roseanne, the Lord told me, I have heard your groaning and have come down to deliver you. God spoke to me through my friend. The word of the Lord came to me through my friend. Saints, we have to be wise and hang out with the right people. You can't let ungodly people speak into your life. She came to me and she spoke the word of the Lord to me. And I came out of that situation. But just to know that God heard my groaning 
and he came down to deliver me? Who am I that he would send my friend with that word? I'm no different than any of you. I'm not special. I'm just, just like you. Amen. Saints, you are so important to God. I hope I get that across to you. You're so important to God. He loves you so much. How about our pastors? God speaks to us through our pastors. In Ephesians 4 and 12, in part of that scripture, it says that our pastors are to speak words of edification, to edify us, to build us up, to tell you who you are in Christ Jesus, to tell you, yeah, you matter, to tell you that God has an awesome plan and purpose for your life. He has good things in store for you. He has a plan and a purpose for you. God speaks to us through our pastors. And that's why it's so important to be part of a church family. To go where you feel the presence of the Lord, where you feel the love of God. To go to a church where they're preaching and teaching the word of the Lord and showing you how to live this life as a Christian. I don't know about you, but I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. I, did, I, I always prayed to God. We went to church every Sunday. My father took his children like little ducklings. We would go with Daddy to church on Sunday. But we weren't spirit-filled. We weren't born again. We really didn't know the Lord. So I really didn't grow up in a home that taught me that I could really have a close walk with God. So you need to know. You need to be in a place, and you need to know how much God loves you and you need to learn how to live as a Christian. Because we're not born knowing. We have to learn. We have to learn, how do I take this word and apply it to my life? How do I live this Christianity? Now I'm a Christian. I, got, I met the Lord, I'm going to share a little bit about that, but I met the Lord when I was about 21, 22 years old. So all those years, I lived my life I did what I wanted. I was just telling my husband the other day, but isn't it something when you think back when we used to do whatever we wanted to do, you know, if it felt good, do it. We grew up in that era, in the 60s, in the 70s, and that was the, that was the saying in those days, if it feels good, do it. Right, Bentley? You probably remember that? If it feels good, do it. Oh, I'm thinking of these songs. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm not going to sing them. <laughs> but that's how we grew up. And then I got saved. Whole new world. Whole new world. The light turned on. Wow! Everything looked different. Jesus loves me. He died for me. That was the first thing that really got me. It's like, oh my goodness, he died for me? I mean, personally, I had to learn how to live as a Christian. So you need to be in a place where you're being taught. How do I do this? so important. So God speaks to us through our pastors. He speaks to us through our parents. I know sometimes that's hard for young people, but really he does. In Ephesians it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. I'm not looking at my kids. But the Bible says in Ephesians, I believe it's six, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That, you, that it will be well with you. So you have parents. God gave you parents to help you maneuver in this life because they've been there already. And they do really know a few things that you don't know. They really, I know it's hard for some young people to believe that. I was just like that when I was growing up. I knew better. My husband knew better than his parents. And we got in a lot of trouble because of it. And it wasn't well with us for years because we rebelled against the authority in our life. But God does speak to us through our parents. He really does. At times we can hear God speak to us through our friends that are believers, and it can encourage us. It could build us up. It could lift us up. How about a prophetic word? If you're in a church service and you hear a prophetic word, God speaks to us through prophetic words to encourage you, to build you up. But again, remember, whatever you hear, it has to line up with the Word of God. Amen. It has to be confirmed with the Word of God. 
That's why it's important for you to read your Bible. You have to read your Bible. You really do. You have to know what the Bible says so that you're not deceived. Because in Scripture, Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 24, this is what Jesus said. He said, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Saints, the elect is you. The elect means the chosen ones. Jesus said, if it's possible, even the elect can be deceived. He said, because the times are going to get so evil and this stuff is going to be going on, that he's going to shorten the days for us. That's what it says in Matthew. Read it for yourself. That scripture was Matthew 24 and 24. So he speaks to us through our pastors. And, he's, and it has to line up with God's word. So we have to know what the Bible says. Because if you don't know what the Bible says, you will be deceived. And I'm not prophesying deception over you. That's the last thing I'm doing. But I'm giving you instruction so that you will not be deceived. Read your Bible. You need to know what it says. God speaks to us through worship music. He speaks to us through music. I love our worship team. We have the best worship team. Amen. They are so anointed. They can play anything. I give them songs that big choirs and big you know, bands with all sorts of instruments. I give them the song and they do the song. It's amazing. They can do anything. <laughs> and they're very humble. They don't think they're doing so great, but they're doing great. Let's all give them a hand right now. They really are. They're doing a great job. I love the worship music. God speaks to us through worship. He speaks to us when we praise him, when we worship him. When you come to church, that's why we encourage people to come for the worship. Don't come after the worship team has stopped. Get here so you're, you're here for the full worship because worship prepares you to receive God's word. It really does. In Psalm 22, in verse 3, in the King James, it says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we lift our voice and start worshiping God, his presence comes. He inhabits his praise. He inhabits our praise. So when you're worshiping God, when you're singing to the Lord, his presence comes. That depression leaves. That worry flees. And you feel his presence. He speaks through music. You can feel God say, don't worry, I got it under control. Don't worry, everything's going to be all right. You can hear the Lord, and you can feel his presence just comfort your heart. Because when Jesus comes, he is peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And he comes with his presence, and he comes with his peace. To, to give you that peace and comfort that you need. Just the other day, um, just a few days ago, I was in my room and I was talking to the Lord about some concerns. And um, I was praying about something. And I heard a song that my husband and I are familiar with, a song that we used to hear by a band that used to come to the church where we were ordained at many years ago, over 25 years ago. <clears throat> And this band was awesome. They would come to the church, and they were very popular at the time, the Imperials. You can listen to their music. They're on, on um, YouTube. You can look at their music, the Imperials. Bob, you might remember the Imperials. One of the songs that they sang was this, because I was, I was praying, I was talking to the Lord about this situation, and all of a sudden, in my spirit, this is what I heard. My God's a big God. And that was a song that we heard many years ago. A little while later, I'm telling you, God is awesome. Just a few minutes later, I went to my husband's office and I'm telling him about my concerns. And he turns to me and he sang those same words to me. He looked up at me and he said, my God's a big God. Tell me, God, don't speak to, you, to us. He speaks to his people. He loves you. Why wouldn't he speak to you? You are precious. He wants you to know how much he loves you. 
He wants you to know when you go to him with your concerns, when you go to the Lord with your worries and whatever's on your heart, he wants you to know he hears you. He hears you. He said, my sheep hear my voice. When you cry to God, he hears you. He wants you to know he's got it under control. I'm telling you, he's got it under control. Excuse me, tears are coming down my face, but I can't help it because God is good. He's a good God, and he loves his people, and you're his people. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you, saints. He loves you. You have to know how much he loves you. God speaks to us through music. Praise the Lord. Turn on Caleb. That's my favorite radio station. <laughs> I'm giving a plug for Caleb. But God is so awesome. He's concerned about everything. Whenever you call out the name of Jesus, whenever you pray, he hears you. He wants you to know that today. And we can hear him. And he spoke to me personally, and then he spoke through my husband. That was, I was like, wow, God, you are just amazing. He's just so amazing. He is a big God. <laughs> He's a real big God. Six, number six, God speaks to us through the movies, the television. Oh my goodness, how many awesome Christian ministers are on television today that weren't on television when I first got saved? When I first got saved, there was the 700 Club and, and PTL, the only two Christian stations on the TV. Now we have Pastor Steve Brower, hallelujah! <laughs> We have so many awesome men and women of God. Joyce Meyer, I mean, I'm not going to name them all, but there are so many awesome ministers of the gospel now. God is speaking to this last generation loud and clear. How about the movies that have been coming out? Heaven is for real. Did you see that movie? You can buy it on DVD now. It's about a little boy who, who went to heaven and came back. He was only four years old, and his father is a pastor. And he was telling his father when he came back things that that little boy would not have known otherwise. There was no way this little four-year-old knew some of the things he told his father. It was amazing. And how about the movie Left Behind? That was just in the theaters. God is speaking to this generation loud and clear because he, he's coming soon. And you don't want to be left behind. You want to be close to the Lord. If there's anything in your life and I'm not just speaking to this congregation. I'm speaking to those on television. If there's anything in your life, anything that might be separating you from the Lord, draw closer to him. Just draw closer to him. He loves you, and he wants you to know that you matter and that he hears your prayers, and you can hear his voice. Amen. You can. Amen. God is awesome. Thank you, Lord. God speaks to us. He's so faithful through TV, through music. He speaks to us through circumstances in our lives. You know, life happens. We live in a fallen world. Many of us heard this cliche, Christians have, that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right? We live in this world, but we're really not of this world. Because when you're born again, now you're in the kingdom of God. So it's like a kingdom, God's kingdom that's in the world. And we live in his kingdom in this world. But you know, there are many, there are people in the world that just aren't saved or not walking right or not hearing right, not doing right. So things happen. Things happen. But you know what? We get to choose how we react to those things. And we have the spirit of God in us to help us to react the right way because God speaks to us through circumstance. 